What is codependency? And do you have codependent issues? Oh, maybe the most important question to ask is what to do about it if you do have some codependent issues. So, in order to address all these three questions, today's video will be divided into three parts. And the first one is what is codependency? The second one, 12 characteristics of codependency. And the last one, two principles of healing. Welcome to Peace with Grace. I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. So let's dive into this topic. The first aspect, what is codependency? Codependency, unfortunately, doesn't have a universally agreed on uh, definition among the professionals. Uh, because it's such a complex uh, problem, it's hard to define it in a simple term. But I have a favorite version of definition of codependency, and it's actually very simple. It goes like this. A codependent person is someone who allows other people's behavior to affect him or her, and who is obsessed with managing others' behaviors. So this definition can be divided into two parts. The first one is codependent people allow others' behavior to affect us. So we, we don't live in a bubble. We are social beings, of course. right? We are going to be affected by other people. But the extent that our codependent people are affected by others' behavior are just so intense. You know, we don't like to, uh, other people to be angry at us. We don't like other people misunderstand us. But for codependent people, not only that, we don't like it. You know, we just couldn't stand it. Right? To the extent that we feel like we have to do something to change this uh, situation. That would lead to the second part of this definition. That means our codependent people are obsessed with managing other people's behaviors. So back to these two scenarios. So the first one, if someone is angry uh, at us, we feel like we really need to go out of a way to apologize, to make peace, to pacify them, and to even place them to make sure that they no longer feel angry at us. Or the second scenario, if we feel someone uh, misunderstands us, especially if someone is very uh, dear and near to us, and we will go out of a way to explain to them where we come from and why we do what we do in the way we do it until we can arrive at the same page. Otherwise, we probably couldn't sleep well at night. So that's the extent that our codependent people suffer from being affected by other people's behaviors. So in short terms, codependence means that we dependent on other people's approval, on other people's behaviors, on other people's love. So if you use one word to describe our codependent people's behavior, what word would you be using? The word I would be using is react. We codependent people react to other people's pain. We react to other people's needs. We react to other people's emotions. We react to other people's pressure. We react to other people's uh, problems. We react, react, and continue to react. So we react instead of act. So what's the difference between act and uh, react? Act comes out of choice. We choose to do the things we do, or we choose not to do certain things we don't want to do. That's called choice. But on the other hand, react 
comes from a lack of choice. We feel like we have to do such a thing. We have to please other people. We have to help other people. We have to. We have to. And we have to. Why do we have to? Now, one of the most precious gifts God gave us is free will. God doesn't even force us to believe in Him. So, free will is very precious. In the past three years, unfortunately, a lot of us have experienced restricted free will, or should I say, taken away free will. But all know to many of our codependent people, actually, our internal free will has been restricted even more for a long time. We do not act out of our free will of choice. We react because we don't think we have choice. All right, let's move on to the second aspect: twelve characteristics. Of codependency. So you may wonder, how do I know、uh, if I have codependent issues? So I think it might help if you try to、uh, identify if you have any of these uh, uh, below twelve characteristics. They are first one, caretaking. Second. Low self worth. Third, repression and obsession. Four, controlling. Five, denial. Six, dependency. Seven, poor communication. Eight, weak boundaries and lack of trust. Nine, anger. Ten, intimacy issues. Eleven. Miscellaneousness, twelve, progressiveness.、Uh, you may recognize some of these characteristics quite easily, but also at the same time you may wonder, what does progressiveness means? <laughs> what are the, some of the words means? I'm so glad you ask, because this video is only an introduction of this new series of video. So after this, I will begin to make another. Twelve、uh, videos to break down the details of each characteristic of codependency, and we will go through a checklist about each characteristic to see how it looks like in action. So that will help you even more to identify if you have some of these codependent issues. Okay, let's move on to the last aspect: two principles of healing. So before. You are eager to jump to my next video. I think it's probably quite essential to give you some、um, principles of healing.、Um, these two principles are compassion and、uh, patience. So the first one, compassion. So when you go through all the characteristics of、um, uh, codependency, you probably will recognize quite some. You will say, "Oh, this looks like me. Oh, oh, that's that's me." Oh, that's definitely me. So along this process, you know, it's not not very. It's really eye opening, but at the same time, it's probably not very pleasant to re- realize we actually have suffered many of the issues, right? All the things we used to do actually are problematic, right? But I wanted to tell you, there is nothing wrong with you. Right? And、uh, that doesn't mean that we are bad or inferior, because most of us learned these behaviors when we were young, when we were just a child, in order to survive in a dysfunctional family environment. By the way, my definition of dysfunctional means less than nurturing. So basically, that means every family. And also, some of us learned this codependent behavior、uh, based on some、um, wrong interpretation of religion. For example, we think that good Christian means that being a good doormat.、Right? So, no matter when and how we learned all these codependent behaviors, it's just out of necessity 
to protect ourselves, to meet our needs when we were young. And uh, as a famous counselor said, codependency is a way of getting our needs met that doesn't get our needs met. So in other words, we have been doing the wrong things for the good reasons. And you know, we have been really coping well with the, the knowledge we had. But now our eyes have been opened. Uh, to see, actually, the coping strategies we have used since we were young are uh, no longer useful for us as an adult, especially as a functioning adult. But remember, we do it out of protection, out of necessity, out of survival need. So be compassionate toward yourself as you're going through this journey. By saying that, also, do you know the definition of insanity? Insanity is keep doing the same thing, but expecting a different result. We have been using the same coping strategy since we, when we were three years old, right? It's probably worked well when we were a child, but does it still work now? I think probably not. We probably get tired of constantly have to please in other people and ex experience the emotional roller coaster all the time because other people's attitude toward us. So we need to change. But change is a process that's led to our second principle of healing, which is patience. You know, we learned all these codependent behaviors probably not overnight. And uh, overcoming all these old habits probably will take more than one day or even two days. Like I mentioned, it process. It starts from identifying it and then move to accept it. And then deal with it and then move to struggle through it. And lastly, we will come to the point of recovering from it. So be patient with yourself. And the fact that you stayed thus far in this video, that's already shown me your commitment to discovering the truth to see what's going on with your life. As I always told my clients in my counseling sessions, awareness is the first step of healing. So today, you have taken the most courageous and most difficult step of healing, which is called the first step. So congratulations. All right, let's just summarize the three aspects of this video again. The first one, what is codependency? So codependent people are those who allow others' behavior affect them and who are obsessed with managing people's behaviors. So the second, 12 characteristics of codependency. I, we have gone, th gone through uh, a list of these 12 uh, characteristics but as I mentioned, I will break down each characteristic in a separate video after this. And the third aspect is two principles of healing, which are compassion and patience. So my question to you is, how many characteristics have you identified? So if you like, just feel free to leave the number down at the comment area. I would love to hear from you. And next video, we will move on to the first characteristic, which is caretaking. So see you then. In our last video, we talked about the 12 characteristics of codependency. As I promised, 
This video we will begin to break down the first characteristic, which is caretaking. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Think and feel responsible for other people, for other people's feelings, thoughts, actions, choices, wants, needs, well-being, lack of well-being, and ultimate destiny. Feel anxiety, pity, guilt when other people have a problem. Feel compelled, almost forced, to help that person solve the problem, such as offering unwanted advice, giving a rapid-fire series of suggestions, or fixing feelings. Feel angry when their help isn't effective. Anticipate other people's need. And wonder why other people don't do the same for them. Say yes when they mean no. Do things they don't really want to be doing. Do more than their fair share of the work. Do things other people are capable of doing for themselves. Do not know what they want and need, or if they do. Tell themselves what they want and need is not important. Try to please others instead of themselves. Find it easier to feel and express anger about injustices done to others rather than injustices done to themselves. Feel safest when giving. Feel insecure and guilty. When somebody gives to them, feel sad because they spend their whole lives giving to other people and nobody gives to them. Feel attracted to needy people. Find needy people attracted to them. Feel bored, empty, and worthless if they don't have a crisis in their lives, a problem to solve, or someone to help. Abandon their routine to respond to or do something for somebody else. Overcommit themselves. Feel hurried and pressured. Believe deep inside, other people are somehow responsible for them. Blame others for the spot they are in. See that other people make them feel the way they do. Believe other people are making them crazy. Feel angry, victimized, unappreciated, and used. Find other people become impatient or angry with them for all the preceding characteristics. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have. Some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So, if you like, you can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So, we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Think and feel responsible for other people, for other people's feelings, thoughts, actions, choices, wants, needs, well-being, lack of well-being, and ultimate destiny. Feel anxiety, pity, guilt when other people have a problem. Feel compelled, almost forced, to help that person solve the problem, such as offering unwanted advice, 
giving a rapid-fire series of suggestions, or fixing feelings. Feel angry when their help isn't effective. Anticipate other people's need, and wonder why other people's don't do the same for them. Say yes when they mean no. Do things they don't really want to be doing. Do more than their fair share of the work. Do things other people are capable of doing for themselves. Do not know what they want and need, or if they do. Tell themselves what they want and need is not important. Try to please others instead of themselves. Find it easier to feel and express anger about injustices done to others rather than injustices done to themselves. Feel safest when giving. Feel insecure and guilty. When somebody gives to them, feel sad because they spend their whole lives giving to other people and nobody gives to them. Feel attracted to needy people. Find needy people attracted to them. Feel bored, empty, and worthless if they don't have a crisis in their lives, a problem to solve, or someone to help. Abandon their routine to respond to or do something for somebody else. Overcommit themselves. Feel hurried and pressured. Believe deep inside, other people are somehow responsible for them. Blame others for the spot they are in. See that other people make them feel the way they do. Believe other people are making them crazy. Feel angry, victimized, unappreciated, and used. Find other people become impatient or angry with them for all the preceding characteristics. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. So our next video, we will be breaking down the second characteristic of codependence, which is low self-worth. So see you then. In our last video, we talked about the first characteristic of codependency, which is caretaking. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the second characteristic, which is low self-worth. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Come from troubled, repressed, or dysfunctional families. Denying their family was troubled, repressed, or dysfunctional. Blame themselves for everything. Pick on themselves for everything, including the way they think, feel, look, act, and behave. Get angry, defensive, self-righteous, and indignant when others blame and criticize them. Something they regularly do to themselves. Reject compliments or praise. Get depressed from a lack of compliment and praise. Feel different from the rest of the world. Think they are not quite good enough. Feel guilty about spending money on themselves, or doing unnecessary or fun things for themselves. Fear rejection. Take things personally. Have been victims of sexual, physical, or emotional abuse, neglect, abandonment, or alcoholism. Feel like victims. Tell themselves 
they can do anything right. Be afraid of making mistakes. Wonder why they have a tough time making decisions. Expect themselves to do everything perfectly. Wonder why they can't get anything done to their satisfaction. Have a lot of shoes. Feel a lot of guilt. Feel ashamed of who they are. Think their lives aren't worth living. Try to help other people live their lives instead. Get artificial feelings of self-worth from helping others. Get strong feelings of low self-worth, embarrassment, failure from other people's failures and problems. Wish good things would happen to them. Believe good things never will happen. Believe they don't deserve good things and happiness. Wish other people would like and love them. Believe other people couldn't possibly like and love them. Try to prove they are good enough for other people. Settle for being needed. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box. If you have that behavior pattern, okay, ready? Go. Come from troubled, repressed, or dysfunctional families. Denying their family was troubled, repressed, or dysfunctional. Blame themselves for everything. Pick on themselves for everything, including the way they think, feel, look, act, and behave. Get angry, defensive, self-righteous, and indignant when others blame and criticize them. Something they regularly do to themselves. Reject compliments or praise. Get depressed from a lack of compliments and praise. Feel different from the rest of the world. Think they are not quite good enough. Feel guilty about spending money on themselves, or doing unnecessary or fun things for themselves. Fear rejection. Take things personally. Have been victims of sexual, physical, or emotional abuse, neglect, abandonment, or alcoholism. Feel like victims. Tell themselves they can do anything right. Be afraid of making mistakes. Wonder why they have a tough time making decisions. Expect themselves to do everything perfectly. Wonder why they can't get anything done to their satisfaction. Have a lot of shoes. Feel a lot of guilt. Feel ashamed of who they are. Think their lives aren't worth living. Try to help other people live their lives instead. Get artificial feelings of self-worth from helping others. Get strong feelings of low self-worth, 
embarrassment, failure from other people's failures and problems. Wish good things would happen to them. Believe good things never will happen. Believe they don't deserve good things and happiness. Wish other people would like and love them. Believe other people couldn't possibly like and love them. Try to prove they are good enough for other people. Settle for being needed. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will talk about the third characteristic of codependency, which is repression and obsession. See you then. In our last video, we talked about uh, the second characteristic of codependency, which is low self-worth. And in today's video, we will move on to the third characteristic, which is uh, repression and uh, obsession. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Push their thoughts and feelings out of their awareness because of fear and guilt. Become afraid to let themselves be who they are. Appear rigid and controlled. Feel terribly anxious about problems and people. Worry about the silliest things. Think and talk a lot about other people. Lose sleep over problems or other people's behavior. Worry. Never find answers. Check on people. Try to catch people in acts of misbehavior. Feel unable to quit talking, thinking, and worrying about other people or problems. Abandon their routine because they are so upset about somebody or something. Focus all their energy on other people and problems. Wonder why they never have any energy. Wonder why they can't get things done. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again, one by one. And you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Push their thoughts and feelings out of their awareness because of fear and guilt. Become afraid to let themselves be who they are. Appear rigid and controlled. Feel terribly anxious about problems and people. Worry about the silliest things. Think and talk a lot about other people. Lose sleep over problems or other people's behavior. Worry. Never find answers. Check on people. Try to catch people in acts of misbehavior. Feel unable to quit talking, thinking, and worrying about other people or problems. Abandon their routine because they are so upset about somebody or something. Focus all their energy on other people and problems. Wonder why they never have any energy. Wonder why they can't get things done. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will move on to the fourth 
characteristic of codependency, which is controlling. So see you then. In our last video, we talked about uh, the third uh, characteristic of codependency, which is repression and obsession. So in today's video, we will move on to the fourth one, which is controlling. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Have lived through events and with people that were out of control, causing them sorrow and disappointment. Become afraid to let other people be who they are and allow events to happen naturally. Don't see or deal with their fear of loss of control. Think they know best how things should turn out and how people should behave. Try to control events and people through helplessness, guilt, coercion, threats, advice giving, manipulation, or domination. Eventually fail in their efforts or provoke people's anger. Get frustrated and angry. Feel controlled by events and people. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again, one by one. And you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Have lived through events and with people that were out of control, causing them sorrow and disappointment. Become afraid to let other people be who they are and allow events to happen naturally. Don't see or deal with their fear of loss of control. Think they know best how things should turn out and how people should behave. Try to control events and people through helplessness, guilt, coercion, threats, advice giving, manipulation, or domination. Eventually fail in their efforts or provoke people's anger. Get frustrated and angry. Feel controlled by events and people. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will talk about the fifth characteristic of codependency, which is denial. So see you then. Last video, we talk about the fourth characteristic of codependency, which is controlling. Now, in today's video, we will break down the fifth characteristic of codependence, which is denial. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now, let's dive into today's topic. Ignore problems or pretend they aren't happening. Pretend circumstances aren't as bad as they are. Tell themselves things will be better tomorrow. Stay busy so they don't have to think about things. Get confused. Get depressed or sick. Go to doctors and get tranquilizers. Become workaholics. Spend money compulsively. Overeat. 
Pretend those things aren't happening either. Watch problems get worse. Believe lies. Lie to themselves. Wonder why they feel like they are going crazy. We have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Ignore problems or pretend they aren't happening. Pretend circumstances aren't as bad as they are. Tell themselves things will be better tomorrow. Stay busy so they don't have to think about things. Get confused. Get depressed or sick. Go to doctors and. Get tranquilizers. Become workaholics. Spend money compulsively. Overeat. Pretend those things aren't happening either. Watch problems get worse. Believe lies. Lie to themselves. Wonder why they feel like they are going crazy. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will move on to the sixth characteristic of codependency, which is dependency. See you then. In our last video, we talked about the fifth characteristic of codependency, which is denial. And in today's video, we will move on to the sixth one, which is dependency. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Don't feel happy, content, or peaceful with themselves. Look for happiness outside themselves. Latch onto whoever or whatever they think can provide happiness. Feel terribly threatened by the loss of anything or person they think provides their happiness. Didn't feel love and approval from their parents. Don't love themselves. Believe other people can't or don't. Love them. Desperately seek love and approval. Often seek love from people incapable of loving. Believe other people are never there for them. Equate love with pain. Feel they need people more than they want them. Try to prove they are good enough to be loved. Don't take time to see if other people are good for them. Worry whether other people love or like them. Don't take time to figure out if they love or like other people. Center their lives around other people. Look to relationships to provide all their good feelings. Lose interest in their own lives when they love. Worry other people will leave them. Don't believe they can take care of themselves. Stay in relationships that don't work. Tolerate abuse to keep people loving them. Feel trapped in relationships. Leave bad relationships and form new ones that don't work. Either wonder if they will ever 
find love. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again, one by one. And you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Don't feel happy, content, or peaceful with themselves. Look for happiness outside themselves. Latch onto whoever or whatever they think can provide happiness. Feel terribly threatened by the loss of anything or person they think provides their happiness. Didn't feel love and approval from their parents. Don't love themselves. Believe other people can't or don't love them. Desperately seek love and approval. Often seek love from people incapable of loving. Believe other people are never there for them. Equate love with pain. Feel they need people more than they want them. Try to prove they are good enough to be loved. Don't take time to see if other people are good for them. Worry whether other people love or like them. Don't take time to figure out if they love or like other people. Center their lives around other people. Look to relationships to provide all their good feelings. Lose interest in their own lives when they love. Worry other people will leave them. Don't believe they can take care of themselves. Stay in relationships that don't work. Tolerate abuse to keep people loving them. Feel trapped in relationships. Leave bad relationships and form new ones that don't work either. Wonder if they will ever find love. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will move on to the seventh characteristic of codependency, which is poor communication. So see you then. In our last video, we talked about the sixth characteristic of codependency, which is dependency. And in today's video, we will talk about the next one, which is poor communication. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Blame, threaten, coerce, beg, bribe, advise. Don't say what they mean. Don't mean what they say. Don't know what they mean. Don't take themselves seriously. Think other people don't take them seriously. Take themselves too seriously. Ask for what they want and need indirectly. Signing, for example. Find it difficult to get to the point. Unsure what the point is. Gauge their words carefully to achieve a desired effect. Try to see what they think will please people. Try to see what they think will provoke people. Try to see what they hope will make people do what they want them to do. Eliminate the word no from their vocabulary. Talk too much. 
talk about other people. Avoid talking about themselves, their problems, feelings, and thoughts. Say everything is their fault. Say nothing is their fault. Believe their opinions don't matter. Wait to express their opinions until they know other people's opinions. Lie to protect and cover up for people they love. Lie to protect themselves. Have a difficult time asserting their rights. Have a difficult time expressing their emotions honestly, openly, and appropriately. Think most of what they have to say is unimportant. Begin to talk in cynical, self-degrading, or hostile ways. Apologize for bothering people. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box. If you have that behavior pattern, okay, ready? Go. Blame, threaten, coerce, beg, bribe, advise. Don't say what they mean. Don't mean what they say. Don't know what they mean. Don't take themselves seriously. Think other people don't take them seriously. Take themselves too seriously. Ask for what they want and need indirectly. Signing, for example. Find it difficult to get to the point. Unsure what the point is, gauge their words carefully to achieve a desired effect. Try to see what they think will please people. Try to see what they think will provoke people. Try to see what they hope will make people do what they want them to do. Eliminate the word "no" from their vocabulary. Talk too much. Talk about other people. Avoid talking about themselves, their problems, feelings, and thoughts. Say everything is their fault. Say nothing is their fault. Believe their opinions don't matter. Wait to express their opinions until they know other people's opinions. Lie to protect and cover up for people they love. Lie to protect themselves. Have a difficult time asserting their rights. Have a difficult time expressing their emotions honestly, openly, and appropriately. Think most of what they have to say is unimportant. Begin to talk in cynical, self-degrading. Or hostile ways. Apologize for bothering people. So I wonder how many box have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. So in next video we will move on to the eighth characteristic of codependency, which is weak boundaries and a lack of trust. So see you then. The video we talked about the seventh characteristic of codependency, which is poor communication. And today we will move on to the eighth one, which is weak boundaries and lack of trust. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic.
say they won't tolerate certain behaviors from other people. Gradually increase their tolerance until they can tolerate and do things they said they never would. Let others hurt them. Keep letting people hurt them. Wonder why they hurt so badly. Complain, blame, and try to control why they continue to stand there. Finally, get angry. Become totally intolerant. Don't trust themselves. Don't trust their feelings. Don't trust their decisions. Don't trust other people. Try to trust untrustworthy people. Think God has abandoned them. Lose faith and trust in God. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like. You can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Say they won't tolerate certain behaviors from other people. Gradually increase their tolerance until they can tolerate and do things they said they never would. Let others hurt them. Keep letting people hurt them. Wonder why they hurt so badly. Complain, blame, and try to control why they continue to stand there. Finally, get angry. Become totally intolerant. Don't trust themselves. Don't trust their feelings. Don't trust their decisions. Don't trust other people. Try to trust untrustworthy people. Think God has abandoned them. Lose faith and trust in God. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will move on to the ninth characteristic of codependency, which is anger. So see you then. This video we talked about the eighth characteristic of codependency, which is weak boundaries and lack of trust. Today we are going to move on to the ninth one, which is anger. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Feel very scared, hurt, and angry. Live with people who are very scared, hurt, and angry. Afraid of their own anger. Are frightened of other people's anger. Think people will go away if anger enters the picture. Think other people make them feel angry. Are afraid to make other people feel anger. Feel controlled by other people's anger. Repress their angry feelings. Cry a lot. Get depressed. Overeat. Get sick. Do mean and nasty things to get even. Act hostile, or have violent temper outbursts. Punish other people for making them. Angry. Have been ashamed for feeling angry. Place guilt and shame on themselves for feeling angry. Feel increasing amounts of anger, resentment, and bitterness. Feel safer with their anger than with hurt feelings. Wonder if they will ever not be angry. 
So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again, one by one. And you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Feel very scared, hurt, and angry. Live with people who are very scared, hurt, and angry. Afraid of their own anger. Are frightened of other people's anger. Think people will go away if anger enters the picture. Think other people make them feel angry. Are afraid to make other people feel anger. Feel controlled by other people's anger. Repress their angry feelings. Cry a lot. Get depressed. Overeat. Get sick. Do mean and nasty things to get even. Act hostile. Or have violent temper outbursts. Punish other people for making them angry. Have been ashamed for feeling angry. Place guilt and shame on themselves for feeling angry. Feel increasing amounts of anger, resentment, and bitterness. Feel safer with their anger than with hurt feelings. Wonder if they will ever not be angry. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. Next video, we will move on to the 10th characteristic of codependency, which is intimacy issues. So see you there. Next video, we talked about the ninth characteristic of codependency, which is anger. So in today's video, we will move on to the 10th one which is intimacy issues. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Are caretakers in the bedroom have sex when they don't want to? Have sex when they'd rather be healed? nurtured and loved. Try to have sex when they are angry or hurt. Refuse to enjoy sex because they are so angry at their partner. Are afraid of losing control. Have a difficult asking for what they need in bed. Withdraw emotionally from their partner. Feel sexual revulsion toward their partner. Don't talk about it. Force themselves to have sex anyway. Reduce sex to a technical act. Wonder why they don't enjoy sex. Lose interest in sex. Make up reasons to abstain. Wish their sex partner would die, go away, or sense their feelings. Have strong sexual fantasies about other people. Consider or have an extramarital affair. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So if you like, you can pause the video for now and uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again, one by one. And you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go.
Are caretakers in the bedroom? Have sex when they don't want to. Have sex when they'd rather be held, nurtured, and loved. Try to have sex when they are angry or hurt. Refuse to enjoy sex because they are so angry at their partner. Are afraid of losing control. Have a difficult asking for what they need in bed. Withdraw emotionally from their partner. Feel sexual revulsion toward their partner. Don't talk about it. Force themselves to have sex anyway. Reduce sex to a technical act. Wonder why they don't enjoy sex. Lose interest in sex. Make up reasons to abstain. Wish their sex partner would die, go away, or sense their feelings. Have strong sexual fantasies about other people. Consider or have an extramarital affair. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked. If you like, please feel free to leave that number. Down in the comment area, I would love to know. In our next video, we will move on to the eleventh characteristic of codependency, which is miscellaneousness. So see you then. In our last video, we talked about the tenth characteristic of codependency, which is intimacy issues. So in today's video, we will break down the eleventh one, which is miscellaneousness. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Be extremely responsible. Be extremely irresponsible. Become martyrs, sacrificing their happiness and that of others for causes that don't require sacrifice. Find it difficult to feel close to people. Find it difficult to have fun and be spontaneous. Have an overall passive response to codependency. Crying, hurt, helplessness. Have an overall aggressive response to codependency. Violence, anger, dominance. Combine passive and aggressive responses. Vacillate in decisions and emotions. Laugh when they feel like crying. Stay loyal to their compulsions and people, even when it hurts. Be ashamed about family, personal, and or relationship problems. Be confused about the nature of the problem. Cover up, lie, and protect the problem. Not seek help because they tell themselves the problem isn't bad enough, or they aren't important enough. Wonder why the problem doesn't go away. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check. If you have some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned, so if you like, you can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Be extremely responsible. Be extremely irresponsible. Become martyrs, sacrificing their happiness and that of others for causes that don't require sacrifice. Find it difficult to feel close to people. Find it difficult to have fun and be spontaneous. 
have an overall passive response to codependency, crying, hurt, helplessness. Have an overall aggressive response to codependency, violence, anger, dominance. Combine passive and aggressive responses. Vacillate in decisions and emotions. Laugh when they feel like crying. Stay loyal to their compulsions and people, even when it hurts. Be ashamed about family, personal, and、uh, or relationship problems. Be confused about the nature of the problem. Cover up, lie, and protect the problem. Not seek help because they tell themselves the problem isn't bad enough, or they aren't important enough. Wonder why the problem doesn't go away. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number down in the comment area. I would love to know. In our next video, we will finally move on to the last characteristic of codependency, which is progressiveness. See you then. Video, we covered the eleventh characteristic of codependence, which is miscellaneousness. So in today's video, we will cover the last characteristic of codependency, which is progressiveness. Welcome to Peace with Grace, and I am Grace, a counselor and a life coach. Now let's dive into today's topic. Feel lethargic. Feel depressed. Become withdrawn and isolated. Experience a complete loss of daily routine and structure. Abuse or neglect their children and other responsibilities. Feel hopeless. Begin to plan their escape from a relationship they feel trapped in. Think about suicide. Become violent. Become seriously emotionally, mentally, or physically ill. Experience an eating disorder, over or under eating. Become addicted to alcohol and other drugs. So we have gone through the checklist of this particular characteristic of codependency. So now it's time for you to check if you have. Some of these behavior patterns we just mentioned. So, if you like, you can pause the video for now and、uh, prepare yourself a pen and a piece of a paper. So, we will go through the checklist again one by one, and you can take the box if you have that behavior pattern. Okay, ready? Go. Feel lethargic. Feel depressed. Become withdrawn and isolated. Experience a complete loss of daily routine and structure. Abuse or neglect their children and other responsibilities. Feel hopeless. Begin to plan their escape from a relationship they feel trapped in. Think about suicide. Become violent. Become seriously emotionally, mentally, or physically ill. Experience an eating disorder, over or under eating. Become addicted to alcohol and other drugs. So I wonder how many boxes have you ticked? If you like, please feel free to leave that number. Down in the comment area, I would love to know. So this is the last video of our、uh, 12 characteristics of codependency. I hope these videos have helped you to identify if you have suffered from some of these codependent issues. And remember, the two principles of healing 
that I shared in the very first video of this series. Compassion and patience. So please be compassionate toward yourself and be patient with yourself as you journey along this new pathway of healing. And I feel privileged and honored to accompany you to walk by your side on this new pathway. So I will see you in future videos.